Hello everyone. Welcome to scaria.com. I am your educator Dr. Lara M. Munir. We started off by discussing about the hemoglobinopathies. Uh, in the first part of our discussion on the hemoglobinopathies, we started off by discussing about the normal physiology of the hemoglobin, how does it carry out oxygenation and how does it lead to transportation of the oxygen. Then we talked about the various things which can go wrong uh, with the hemoglobin, either a structural abnormality or a functional abnormality or something that leads to abnormal or inadequate production of the hemoglobin. In the first part of our lecture on the hemoglobinopathies or the disorders of hemoglobin, we talked about the normal physiology and then we talked about sickle cell disease. So this lecture is going to be a continuation of that lecture. Uh, we are going to start off uh, from where we left uh, initially by starting off the discussion with uh, unstable hemoglobins or the various variants of the hemoglobins. Uh, how do these unstable hemoglobins form? What is the underlying patho pathology? And uh, what are the various types of these unstable hemoglobins? What are the various variations? And collectively, what are the signs and symptoms that are present that uh, lead us to the suspicion of uh, my, uh, presence of an unstable variant of hemoglobin in this patient? What are the important diagnostic tools which we have? How, uh, what are the gold standard tests and how do they help us in effectively ruling out the other abnormalities? Then we are going to discuss certain uh, specific symptoms like in patients with high affinity hemoglobin, what are the underlying pathologies? How do clinically the symptoms of uh, erythrocytosis, plethora or headache develop? What is the pathophysiology? And then on the other hand, uh, how do someone who has a low affinity hemoglobin <coughs> formation lead to cyanosis uh, or uh, formation? Then uh, certain important hemoglobin variants like the met hemoglobin, uh, the carbon monoxide, etc. How do they form? What is the underlying abnormality that leads to the formation either in an acquired form or a genetic form? These will be discussed along with their treatment. Then we are going to shift our focus on the major topic of discussion in this lecture, which is the which are the thalassemia syndromes. We are going to discuss about uh, uh, what are the globin chains, what are the types of globin chains, how do the various types of hemoglobins incorporate the globin chains, and then what can go wrong uh, either at the level of the alpha chain or the beta chain that leads to types different types of thalassemia formation. What is the uh, underlying pathophysiology, then what are uh, the various signs and symptoms uh, in a patient presenting with beta thalassemia major specifically, because these are the patients which we are going to see in clinical practice. Someone which are, with a beta thalassemia trait or an alpha thal trait will not uh, be clinically evident, but patients who have a major disorder, uh, what? how do these signs and symptoms develop, uh, what are the reasoning or the rationale behind the symptoms pre presenting and how do these symptoms help us in evaluation of the patient. And after we uh, have a good history and a clinical exam, uh, how, what are the various things which we are going to see on the peripheral blood film and how do we diagnose these patients to effectively manage their symptoms. Let's touch uh, a few variants of the thalassemia like the HP leprae or the HPE will be discussed. Then in the latter part of the lecture, we are going to talk about the acquired hemoglobinopathies uh, like carbon monoxide poisoning, methemoglobinemia, how do we differentiate them on a clinical basis, what are the uh, definitive tests we have to diagnose them and what are the treatment options for uh, these acquired hemoglobinopathies. And then overall, how do we treat the hemoglobinopathies on the whole, specifically uh, the thalassemia syndromes, as we know that there is no definitive cure as yet for all these problems. But it is important to manage the associated symptoms, specifically with transfusion, uh, like the iron overload can be managed by the iron chelating agents. And we are going to briefly talk about the bone marrow transplantation and the gene therapy options which we have. So to watch this complete lecture, along with thousands of other medical lectures in any area of your interest, uh, be, is, be it the basic sciences or the clinical sciences course, please log on to scardia.com and start your free trial today.